Mennonites are groups of Anabaptist Christian church communities of denominations. The name is derived from the founder of the movement, Menno Simons, 1496-1561, of Friesland. Through his writings about reformed Christianity during the Radical Reformation, Simons articulated and formalized the teachings of earlier Swiss founders. With the early teachings of the Mennonites founded on the belief in both the mission and ministry of Jesus, which the original Anabaptist followers held with great conviction, despite persecution by various Roman Catholic and mainline Protestant states. In this video we will explore the sex lives and marriage practices of the Mennonite people. Relax and enjoy the video. Formal Mennonite beliefs were codified in the Dordrecht Confession of Faith in 1632, which affirmed, the baptism of believers only, the washing of the feet as a symbol of servanthood, church discipline, the shunning of the excommunicated, the non-swearing of oaths, marriage within the same church, strict pacifistic physical non-resistance, anti-Catholicism and in general, more emphasis on true Christianity, involving being Christian and obeying Christ, but they interpret it from the Holy Bible. However, the sex lives of the Mennonites people is not as saintly as many may believe. Just like the Amish people, the Mennonites do have their kinky sex secrets as well. Hey are basic facts which the Mennonites do not want you to know about their sex lives. Sex and marriages. The Mennonites' belief and understand on the topic of sex and marriages have major similarities with that of the early Jewish people. Sex is the woman's right, not the man's. A man has a duty to give his wife sex regularly and to ensure that sex is pleasurable for her. He is also obligated to watch for signs that his wife wants sex, and to offer it to her without her asking for it. The woman's right to sexual intercourse is one of a wife's three basic rights. The others are food and clothing, which a husband may not reduce. The Mennonites specifies both the quantity and quality of sex that a man must give his wife. It specifies the frequency of sexual obligation based on the husband's occupation, although this obligation can be modified in the marriage contract. A man may not take a vow to abstain from sex for an extended period of time, and may not take a journey for an extended period of time, because that would deprive his wife of sexual relations. In addition, a husband's consistent refusal to engage in sexual relations is grounds for compelling a man to divorce his wife, even if the couple has already fulfilled the other obligation to procreate. Although sex is the woman's right, she does not have absolute discretion to withhold it from her husband. A woman may not withhold sex from her husband as a form of punishment, and if she does, the husband may divorce her. Although some sources take a more narrow view, the general view of Mennonites is that any sexual act that does not involve the destruction of seed, that is, ejaculation outside the vagina, is permissible. As some teachings prescribe that, a man may do whatever he pleases with his wife. The Laws of Separation One of the most mysterious areas of Mennonite sexual practices is the law of separation of husband and wife during the woman's menstrual period. These laws are also known as family purity. Few people outside of the Orthodox community are even aware that these laws exist, which is unfortunate, because these laws provide many undeniable benefits. The laws are not deliberately kept secret. They are simply unknown because most non-Orthodox Mennonites do not continue their religious education, and these laws address subjects that are not really suitable for discussion with children under the age of 13. According to some historians, a man is forbidden from having sexual intercourse with a menstruating woman. This is part of the extensive laws of ritual purity described in some early Jewish teaching on both marriage and sex. At one time, a large portion of Mennonites' discipline revolved around questions of ritual purity and impurity. The law of separation is the only law of ritual purity that continues to be observed today. The time of separation begins at the first sign of blood and ends in the evening of the woman's seventh clean day. This separation lasts a minimum of 12 days. The law prohibits only sexual intercourse, yet some historians believed that some Mennonites broadened this prohibition, 
maintaining that a man may not even touch his wife or sleep in the same bed as her during this time. The fertility benefits of this practice are obvious and undeniable. In fact, it is remarkable how closely these laws parallel the advice given by medical professionals today. When couples are having trouble conceiving, modern medical professionals routinely advise them to abstain from sex during the two weeks around a woman's period, so as to increase the man's sperm count at a time when conception is not possible, and to have sex on alternate nights during the remaining two weeks. When you combine this basic physical benefit with the psychological benefit of believing that you are fulfilling GD's will, it is absolutely shocking that more couples with fertility problems do not attempt this practice. The rejection of this practice by the liberal Mennonites movements is not a matter of informed choice, but simply a matter of ignorance or blind prejudice. Homosexuality. Sexual relations between men are clearly forbidden by the Mennonite people. Such acts are condemned in the strongest possible terms, as abhorrent. The only other sexual sin that is described in such strong terms is the sin of remarrying a woman you had divorced after she had been married to another man. In fact in the early times, the sin of sexual relations between men is punishable by death, as are the sins of adultery and incest. It is important to note, however, that it is homosexual acts that are forbidden, not homosexual orientation. Mennonites' teaching and beliefs focused on a person's actions rather than a person's desires. A man's desire to have sex with another man is not a sin, so long as he does not act upon that desire. In fact, it could be said that a man who feels such desires but does not act upon them is worthy of more merit in that regard than a man who does not feel such desires at all. Just as one who refrains from pork because it is forbidden deserves more merit than one who refrains from pork because he doesn't like the taste. I have seen some modern orthodox sources suggest that if homosexuality is truly something hardwired in the brain, as most gay activists suggest, then a man who acts upon that desire is not morally responsible for his actions, but I am not sure how widespread that opinion is. In any case, it is not quite as liberal a position as some would have you believe. Essentially, it is equivalent to saying that a kleptomaniac would not be held morally responsible for stealing. Thanks for watching, do like, subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section.